Nairobi Stock Exchange now, where data is actually showing that only three percent of accounts on the on the on the Nairobi Stock Exchange, not the Nigerian Stock Exchange, they both are NSC. That's the acronym. I have been active over the last two years, so we're going to have a discussion on why that is. Is it because of speculative uh, activities on the exchange or low returns? Joining us from Stockholm is Eric. Uh, Eric Mokaya, uh, who is joining us, who is the head of Mwango Capital. Eric, good morning to you. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. So what's, what's behind this low patronage of the Nairobi Stock Exchange? What do we attribute this low patronage to? So I think I would, uh, uh, morning to you, first of all. Uh, I would attribute it mostly to uh, investor, lack of investor knowledge and education on markets. Uh, it was a self, uh, in a way, like I got interested in the markets around in the 2000s, mid 2000s, when the stock market was doing very well. The Nairobi Stock Exchange was having its boom years. So I think uh, the fact that the stock market was going up every day, I remember a stock like East African Cables was almost doubling every day. Then you get to know about these stocks a lot more because they're highlighted in the news. Um, and then, of course, then uh, that's how people generally build up interest in markets. But now, right now, the stock market has been not doing well for the last uh, seven years or so. Uh, it peaked around 2011 uh, there, and it's not been up there again. So I think that's one reason why people are not invested. Uh, if you look at the, the story itself, uh, the statistics show that the highest participation was around uh, 2007, 2005, 2007, when uh, there, there, there was a boom market. So a boom market tends to attract more investors and more investor interest at the end of the day. But I would say uh, partially also one of the factors that uh, that makes this an issue uh, that that makes uh, retailers not participate is of course the the fee. The fee is quite high. So if you're doing a, a round transaction, it may cost cost you around four uh, percent. Uh, so if it costs you around four percent to do a buy and then sell or to sell and then buy again, then at the end of the day, you the stock has to move more than 4% for you to make any amount of money. So I think that's why day trading has not picked up. So my contention is that if, uh, as we've seen in the West, if uh, the fees are reduced to zero or close to zero, then people are able to trade a bit more and to be more engaged. And finally, I think also it's also a lack of uh, companies that excite people. So you'd want to see maybe on the Nairobi Stock Exchange companies that are tech-based, that maybe uh, generate apps that everyone is using. Perhaps M-Pesa would do if it's spun off would have been listed on the stock exchange and that would have generated a little bit more investor interest because that's kind of where uh, most investors at least globally are invested in, in tech companies. They're more interested in companies that they use every day and companies that are more uh, are more in tune with what they're doing. So perhaps if Flutterwave was to le uh, to list on the stock exchange, oh, that wow. would generate a bit more interest, yeah. Yeah, it, it definitely would. They just raised, what, $250 million at a... Three billion dollar valuation, but Eric, if you reduce fees to zero, how do brokerage firms make any money? It's not really close to zero, uh, not to zero. Oh, okay, Essentially, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that at least half the fees, like two percent, is still very high. If you put it, if you put it at one percent, perhaps a little bit more trading. So the way you recoup this is mostly through. Uh, if you reduce the fees, then the higher trading volumes, then you get uh, a little bit of, uh, a re uh, you recoup a little bit of the revenue through that. So I think that's the way to go for most investors these days. And I guess uh, looking at the, I mean, it's still early in the year. There's an election coming up. Can you see a, a pickup in uh, trading? If any of these suggestions you've put forward, do you think that can happen later this year? I think it can, but of course, again, it's an election year. And what you see from investors is a bit of caution. As we last time we were around, I think we talked about investors, uh, especially the foreign investors, uh, retreating a little bit as they try to see how the election will play off. I would say this election may will be different because it's more, almost a transition uh, from a, a, a previous regime to a totally new regime. So uh, expectations for investors will be different. Uh, who is coming in? What different thing would they do in that regard? So I think that's another reason why people don't invest a lot but also a very key reason is kenyans love real estate so i think the kenyans are more invest would rather buy a small plot uh, 100 uh, uh, four by 100 or something like that uh, 50 by 100 uh instead of just investing in the stock exchange so perhaps we need to tell them that uh, there's a there's an opportunity for them to invest in stocks where they can sell and they don't have to wait for long uh if they if they want to uh be more liquid uh, going forward uh, i would say
All right, look, Eric, great conversation. I want to ask you a few more questions, but we're, we're out of time. You have to see how things play out this year. Eric uh, Mukaya, founder of Mango Capital, thank you so much for joining us uh, from Stockholm. Appreciate your insights on the Nairobi Stock Exchange. Thank you. All right.